Today, we're doing the first interview of 2021 to an American female artist. An artist who is born in Brooklyn, New York, residing and working in California, who has exhibited in galleries and museums nationally and internationally, and have her work in private collections around the world. Robbie Kay, we are delighted to meet you today. How are you? I'm so good and I'm honored to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Robbie. Robbie, I understand you're a multidisciplinary artist and you have developed the knowledge to dominate the fields of painting, photography, and music. Can you define the power behind Robbie K to elevate the creativity from all those medias, from photography to painting to music? Uh, sure. For me, the, the common thread between all those mediums is composition and communication. I started in music as a way to communicate. That, that was really my voice. So, um, and it was also refuge for me. So at a very young age, it, it was my escape. It became my escape very early. And um, as I got older, I started creating my own music because when I was younger, I would give lyrics to other people that, communicated how I felt, but I couldn't write. And so as I got older, I thought, well, I'm gonna try writing my own songs and hopefully other people will relate to that um, as well, kind of, you know, so that we're never feeling like we're alone in what we're feeling and that we have a voice. And so the concept of com composition really um, transitions from music to, to photography because you're composing imagery. You know, there are different components. And, and then of course now in painting, it's the same thing. While the other two are more solitary, for me, there really is nothing more exciting or exhilarating for me than to make music with other people at the same time. Because you create this one entity at the end and that we're all a part of. And um, wow, it's just the most amazing experience for me. The universal language, right? Absolutely. And, 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 if, and any time that I travel, if there's a band or something, you know, I always ask to sit in. What instrument do you play? I play keyboards. I, I fake guitar for a long time. I, I play guitar, but my main instrument is keyboard. Do you think making art can happen without motivation or inspiration? I think, I think it can happen without. I think that the the act of making art can generate actually inspiration and, and motivation. I, you know, I once took this like Japanese painting course and I didn't know anything about it, but the instructor put on music, you know, here's your ink, here's this like huge piece of white paper. I not, didn't know what to expect. And by the end, I had this like cool looking thing that I created just from dancing and throwing the ink around. So, so yeah, in a way, I mean, I didn't go there with motivation or inspiration. I did go there with an open mind. Um, for me, I think the, the act of creativity for me is more of a communication. Mm -hmm. It's like something that I need to do to feel better. And you artists are the only mortals that have 100% the freedom to express. I've been thinking and tying about creating, and I don't know that it'll come to fruition, but a new series called Freedom of Speech, because with the climate of everything around us, politically and otherwise, you know, I think probably for most artists, the way that they're coping with that is by, through their creativity. So it's like, we get to say how we feel about it. Yes. You know, without getting threatened. <laughs> And um, one thing that caught my attention on your website is a blue fabulous abstraction named Aftermath. How do you choose the title of your works? And do you think it is relevant to the observer? Um, well, just that, that piece actually is called The Changing Sea and the name of the whole series okay. is called Aftermath. Beautiful and, work. Thank you so much. 
And aftermath is the result of being in quarantine and how I coped with the pandemic um, after taking a really deep dive into some heavy duty soul searching and the whole concept of self love, I found myself as usual on the other side and I started creating these works that had some, had a lot of texture, but always liked. So I wanted to convey um, the light that is always present, even in the darkest times and the most difficult times. And you know, it's funny, I was thinking about this question about titles. You know, there are a lot of, you know, well-known artists that have amazing work and the title is Untitled. Title. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's kind of, it's kind of personal and it, I, I guess it depends, right? Mm -hmm. I give a lot of thought to my titles and often I will, steal from my song titles that I've created in the past, like The Changing Sea. That's the name of a song that I wrote a long time ago. And also, I think I like to put something out there that will provoke some kind of relatability. You yeah. know, um, you know, last year at a gallery, I sold a piece called You Are So Intense, you know? So somebody who related to being intense, I think not only liked the aesthetics, but also the concept of the intensity. Under which context do you experiment a new series of paintings? It's a, it's a, it's a total experiment. Every, you know, and I, I feel like more like a scientist than a painter sometimes in working with the paints and the, the texture and the colors. So I would have to say, I would have to say painting and, you know, the way everything interacts with each other. And um, it's always a surprise. And it's like, oh, what if I do this? You know, it's not just a scale of notes and it's finite, right? Like in music or in photography, you know, the aperture is, you know, you know with painting, it's a total free for all. Your paintings show a lot of texture when you're working through that painting, do these colors and textures come in spontaneously or you already put aside your colors that you know you're gonna be using? You know, sometimes I will lay in bed at night and, and, and see, see the piece I'm going to create. Okay. And I have to tell you, nine and a half out of 10 times, it's never that. <laughs> <laughs> so nothing that we plan goes to no okay i even write it in my journal and i go this will be gray this will be orange and like even today you know it's nothing like that so so i think it is very spontaneous and i think i like the texture because for me it makes the it makes the piece come alive you know i like the dimensions if there is any artist dead or alive that you admire the most, and if you have the opportunity to go out with that artist, who would that be? That's a really tough one to uh, narrow it down to one. Okay. But I have to say, you know, it, it's, and, and these two artists are so, so, is it okay to say two, just in case? Doesn't matter, be free. Okay, so I would love to sit at a table with like, um, with, Georgia O'Keeffe, okay. O'Keeffe, Rothko, and Jeff Kuhn. That would be a long time on the table. Weeks. <laughs> yes, exactly. Those three debating about art. Well, I, I recently actually took like a master class online from Jeff Kuhn's and it just, it blew me away and opened up my horizon. My dear Robbie Kay, it has been a pleasure meeting you and an honor to have you at the event LinkedIn New York City Women of the World. Well, thank you. And thank you for all the work that you do to, to promote artists and to share their work.